the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. the one holy and undivided trinity. Amen. Amen. You belong. Have you heard that before? If you've been around for the last month or so, you've heard me say it, you've heard other speakers say it, you've heard our stewardship speakers say it. You belong you belong to God, you belong to one another, and you belong to St. Philip's. Well, I want to add something to that today. You are a saint. We are all saints. Today, as we celebrate all saints, the feast of all saints, we claim that belonging and sainthood are gifts of pure grace. It's what we celebrate at our baptism when we are marked as Christ's own forever. The sinner is accounted holy and justified before God, not because of the works that they do, but because of the love of God in Christ for us. We belong to God and we belong to one another and we are deemed saints by God, and thus we are free to love, to live fully. We are free to make all that is good and true and lovely a reality in this world, and we are free to pour out our lives in generosity. So over the last month, I've been telling you again and again that you belong, and today we celebrate that our belonging extends to that great cloud of witnesses, all those saints who have come before us, all the saints who are alive today, all the saints who will come after us. We belong to the great cloud of witnesses. So today I wanna to tell you a little bit about one of my favorite saints, my paternal grandmother. And as I tell you about her, I invite you to consider who your saint is. Who's your favorite saint? 
What have they taught you? My grandmother's name was Agnes Megara Campbell Rolls, but I called her Nana. Nana lived for her entire life, except for the four years of college, in the little town of Union, West Virginia. But Nana insisted that we not call it a town, but call it a village. It was a village. She was born, actually, on a little, in a, at a farm in a community outside of Union, a community called Gates. And every Sunday, her family would travel the five miles to town to a little Presbyterian church. Now, for the beginning part of her life, I think they got there on, through, on foot or riding a horse. But when she was about five, they got a car. But she said it still took a long time to get to town because at least one time during the trip, the tire would puncture and they'd have to stop and repair the tire. Sometimes it happened both ways, on the way there and on the way back. Nana was baptized and she learned her catechism at that little Presbyterian church. And she told me later that learning the catechism as a child was like, me like memorizing meaningless words. But she realized as she grew up that her life grew in to this complicated theological text. She said it was like having a vessel, a container, that gave structure to her life. And it turns out that Nana liked structure a lot. She was a small and wiry woman, and she was not a stereotypical grandmother with a warm kitchen and a warm embrace. She was just as likely to engage me in a debate as to give me a warm hug. And in this way, she reminds me a little bit of another one of my favorite saints, Jacob, from the Old Testament. Nana wrestled with life. She always wanted to improve herself, her children, and her grandchildren. I can still her, hear her say, stand up straight. Don't slouch, stand up straight. She was tough, but she was also a very interesting person. She wanted to get to know everyone. And she did know everyone in Union, mostly because she taught math at the local high school, so she had taught most of the county. But she also liked to get to know newcomers. So in the 70s, Monroe County, there in southern West Virginia, received a number of back-to-the-landers who bought the cheap land so that they could live on the land cheaply and uh, make their arts and crafts. And Nana befriended them all, often to the dismay of her family members and other locals. I'll never forget, as the town gathered for Nana's funeral, I overheard one cousin say to another one rather loudly, what are all these hippies doing here? <laughs> Nana was certainly not a hippie herself, but she wanted to know the hippies. She lived her whole life in Union, but Nana had a taste for the wider world and a hunger for a life that was as broad as it is deep. It's amazing how Nana grew her roots so deeply in the community of her birth, and yet she also spread her branches as widely as she could out into the world. She, she sought out experiences of difference, but yet she always returned to her town where she taught and tutored and volunteered at the library and where she taught Sunday school just about every Sunday of her entire life. I still can't believe this, but in the 1980s, Nana traveled from little Union, West Virginia, to both the Soviet Union and to China. I think traveling to a communist country in the 80s during the Cold War was about as exotic as it could get, and so that's where she was going to travel. So for my entire life, Nana suffered from rheumatoid arthritis, and to keep her disease under control, her doctor prescribed back stretches 
a daily walk, and an afternoon nap. So along with cocktail hour, these were the daily rituals of her life. Back stretches, morning walk, afternoon nap, five o'clock cocktail hour. So every morning I stayed with her, Nana would call up, time to get up, call up the stairs, time to get up. And after breakfast of a soft boiled egg, we did what I later recognized to be yoga and a little bit of Pilates on her bedroom floor. Cat stretches, downward facing dog. We didn't call it that, but we just called it back stretches. And then we would walk through downtown, up Cemetery Hill, and around the cemetery three times. Never two times, never four times, always three times. Walking each morning through the cemetery where she would later be buried, Nana lived with her death in sight. And I think it made her want to be even more alive, to love her life, and to wrestle it for a blessing. So whether it was on the floor doing cat stretches or walking up Cemetery Hill or slowing down in the middle of, of the day for a rest or having Coke and Fritos while she drank her martini during cocktail hour, she invited me into the rituals of her life, that vessel of faith and virtue and discipline that her Presbyterian catechism had given her. Nana's funeral was held at that same Presbyterian church where she had been baptized. And it was the only time that I've ever experienced a funeral sermon coming to an abrupt stop because the preacher had started weeping. And I sat in the pew and thought, either he's so relieved that that ornery congregant has gone on, or maybe he really loved Nana, and it was probably a little bit of both. Nana was not a perfect person. She could be so hard on people, and she was often hardest on the people that she loved the most, including her granddaughter. Along with these cherished memories of Nana sits an acknowledgement of the brokenness of her life and the pain that her brokenness caused within our family. I think one of the most difficult lessons to learn is that those who teach us most about life and faith are often also the source of grief and pain. We are all at the same time saint and sinner. But God sees us clearly for what and who we are, and God loves us. And God chose to mark us as redeemed, to free us from guilt, to free us from shame, so that we can claim the blessing of a life fully lived. So today, as we celebrate the saints, let us also remember the lesser known saints who have shared this broken and holy life with us. Part of the celebration of our saints is to commit ourselves to a life that reflects our belonging and reflects our sainthood. We've spoken over the last month about these practices of worship, grow, serve, connect, give, and invite. Like Nana's catechism, these practices can become a structure on which to grow a saintly life. They can be a trellis on which to train the vine of our life. Now, Nana was a child of the Depression and a person of Scottish heritage. She was elegant, but she was frugal. Very, very frugal. Yet she was generous too, and especially generous to the things that she loved and believed in. She was generous with her children and her grandchildren, and she was very generous to her church. She was what we would call today in our stewardship parlance a converted tither. 
She gave because that is what you do. It's an expression of faith, an expression of belonging, an expression of sainthood. In just a little while, we're going to bless the pledge cards, bless the commitments of giving that we have given to our parish. And I want to thank you. Thank you for your support for your parish. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I love it that we're celebrating Stewardship Sunday, In Gathering Sunday, at the same time that we are celebrating the saints. So don't forget what my favorite saint reminds us of. You belong. And you too are a saint. You too are freed to grab life by the horns and wrestle out a blessing. You too are free to partner with God in making the kingdom of God here on earth. You are free to be generous. Thanks be to God.